Very well. Welcome back to Let's Play Thea, the Crimson Eclipse. Last time, we explored the little village of Raleigh. We encountered Valiant, the chief of the, gong the vanguards that were chasing us, and we just agreed to head over back to Rail, because apparently the vassals wants to speak with us. This time, we're entering the East Eels. So we're going back to where we were before, and we're taking the way back to Rail. We're patrolling the area, you got nothing to fear. Okay. So here, in this episode, I'd like to elaborate a little bit more on characters and statistics as we fight our way through here. So, the characters in this game, in battle, are defined by six statistics. There is HP, which is our elf, is that green guy over there. Every time you get hit, you lose HP. If your HP reaches zero, the character is dead or knocked out. If your old cards are knocked out, it's game over. You are blown back to the title screen, basically. Then you have SPs. SPs are skill points, which is the blue gauge you see in battle below its HP. And wait, right, put a pin on that thought for a second. We'll go back to it. There it is. Alright, so SPs are... It's basically your MPs, your magic points, or whatever you want to call it. BP. Well, whenever you want to use a skill, you need to spend SPs. And then, apart from those two statistics, we have four more, which defines the strength of the characters. Which we can see on the status screen. I'm gonna go over that, those real quick. Let's take set for example. As you can see, HP, SP, I already explained those. Then there's strength. Strength is your physical prowess. The more strength you have, the more damage your physical attacks will do. Res is resistance, which is your defense. The more resistance you have, the less damage you'll take from physical attacks that enemies will do to you. SPR is spirit and is your magical defense. If an enemy uses a skill based on spirit, then the more spirit you have, the less damage you'll take. And Dex is Dexterity, and that's your ATB speed. The more Dexterity you have, the faster you'll act in battle. Now, I think I've read somewhere that Dexterity also defines the, your dodge, so I'll, what's your chance of dodging an attack? But honestly, even when I maxed out my characters at 999 Dexterity, I've never seen them dodging that often, so I'm not sure that's correct. But, I know that's the ATB speed. So those are the six main statistics of characters. Now that we know that, what are the roles that our characters are fulfilling, I guess, in battle? Well, let's start from Set, actually. Well, Set is a glass cannon. A physical glass cannon. A lot, it does a lot of damage, but it does is quite frail. Yes, doesn't have quite good HP. He has quite a bit of SPs actually, because he has more than Ruder right now. Good strength, not really good resistance, nice spirit, and good dexterity overall. So yeah, he is a glass cannon. It's interesting because it's a very interesting glass cannon, because right now it starts as you would expect, but later in the game. Like when talking late game, it gets a lot more HP than you would expect, and a lot more SPs than you would expect. Which is kinda weird. Also, a little bit of trivia about Set. Set's name was not supposed to be Set at all. The name Set was chosen as a placeholder in waiting for a better name to give him. But at the end the developers decided that Set was a good name as it was, so they kept it. Also, another thing about Set, which will be something we will find on other cards as well, is last name. Set's last name is Sheridan, and Sheridan is a liquor. I think it's from Ireland, not entirely sure. We will find more characters which will reference either liquors or cigarettes. And I'll try to point them all out when we find them, when we recruit them in our party. Or not, because there might be some cards that we don't recruit in our party which are still reference to stuff. And that's it for our main character. Now, Rudra. 
Rudrain battle, I want to say it's a tank, but in my opinion, tanks in, R in RPGs are supposed to like throw the aggro of enemies, and in Tia, there's no such thing as an aggro system. Every time an enemy attacks, it's just a random its target, so. Rudrain is more like a defender, actually. He has a lot of HP, not very good at space, but he doesn't use skills that often. Good strength, very good defense, low spirit, and low dexterity. Especially low dexterity. Right now, it doesn't, doesn't look like it. Let me see his dexterity right now. Status, 51 on set, 47 on Rudra, so he is lower, but not that lower. Now, trust me. In late game, like very late game, like the final dungeon, there will be a big gap between Rudra and the other characters. And you will see that Rudra will start lagging behind a lot. And by the time Rudra takes a turn, the other cards have taken three turns each. Which obviously makes Rudra that way. But if you can find some way to up that dexterity so he can keep up the pace with the other characters, then he's a very valid character. It is a very valid character for the pretty much the entirety of the game. But again, I, I tell you, if you don't find a way to up this dexterity on the late game, he is just gonna lag behind a lot. And Rudra, Rudra's name and is a reference to a mythological creature, not actually a, religi a religious creature of Hinduism. I think it's something to deal with moons too. I'm not entirely sure about that. But he also does as another reference. You see, these developers have created in the past a game called Moonbound. And in that game, there was a wolf named Rudra. So he's also referencing that. And another thing I'm doing right here is farming. <laughs> in this game, since random battles are not really random, you know what it's flaming fog corresponds to like this one is always these two frogs if you know this we only fought these two frogs since the last five minutes and because i know that these two frogs give the most experience out of all the fights in this place i can just leave the room and reset this fight to fight them over and over to gain the most experience and this is how you farm in the game you just find the battle that gives you the most experience and you just keep resetting the room until and fight that battle over and over and over we could try that actually <laughs> we could be bold and try that we're level 4 and 3 how much for rudra can we see that no we cannot see that's the thing no actually we can't see angle it's there it's under the level okay i think we can actually level it up once but I'm not sure if I want to take on the mini boss because we're playing hard. If we were playing normal, I could have tried, but mm, not really feeling it. I'm just gonna defeat these two frogs, and maybe if Rudra levels up, good. If not, we're just gonna move on because we're about to get introduced to a new combat mechanic. It's I would really like to explain because it's pretty much the last combat mechanic we'll ever get introduced to. Okay, he levels up. So now we're all level 4, right? Yeah, nice. Alright then, so... Yeah, we're not gonna fight that. Not now, at least. And we're gonna save over to slot 3. Actually, slot 3 is the beginning of this episode, so slot 4. Also, hey, this music is from Xenoblade Chronicles. It's Gold Plains Knight. Yeah, not a reference, or no, it's not really a reference again. <laughs> but hey, it's Xenoblade Chronicles, you cannot, you cannot not like it, you know what I mean. I will try to point out as many musics that I can, that I know of. For example, the battle music here is from Bravely Default, it's the normal battle music. It's a good one. We also heard the music from Shadow of the Colossus back when Valiant was talking, so 
Hey, that's another good one there. Another pretty good game. This is new. Horrible Remedy times three, okay. So we can jump up here on the rock and then over here. I believe we have a fight coming up. All right, let's go. See what we have here. Over there. Don't let it get away. Show me your courage. The way of the war. Also, this music, I think is this music is too from Blade of the Fall. This is the boss music. Yeah, I think it is. Pretty sure about that. So, do you want to see the mastery tutorial? We heard about mastery before, but we never even we we didn't really know what that was. The mastery bar is a special bar composed by three levels, as you can see it on the right side of the screen. If you attack the enemies or use skills, the mastery bar will charge, but it will reduce when you guard or use items. So basically, if you play offensively, it will go up. If you play defensively, it will go down. The mastery bar is also influenced by the enemy threat level. The bar will decrease when the enemies take their actions according to their threat. Be careful, each exhausted character raises the enemy threat level. A mastery skill has to be set one to one of the three le levels of the mastery bar. The higher the level the bar reaches, the better the bonus, but be careful. You need to reach exactly the level you set, and keeping the mastery bar full can be hard. You can learn mastery skills as common skills once you obtain the relative dominus. Every character has an icon in the bottom left corner of the avatar. This icon shows the overmastery effect. There are five types of overmastery. A character's overmastery effect is innate and cannot be changed. When the mastery bar is depleted at the end of a fight, the overmastery effect of the characters in the party will grant you specific extra rewards. That was a lot of things to, ta to, <laughs> to take into account right now, but the mastery doesn't look as strong as last time. Those crystals look paler now. So the mastery is the gauge that you can see on the right side of the screen. Unfortunately, I'd like to show you how that works. <coughs> but this guy hits hard. So we need to stick on our plan of attacking and defending. Because if we do that, oh wait, he's going to attack next, so if I keep defending, he's gonna eat me while I'm defending, right? Okay, that in that way I take less damage, now I can attack, and if I can defend the next turn, I can get hit while I'm defending. Which will help me in the long run. Rudra is bleeding, which is not good, but he has a lot of HP. Uh, by the way, bleed, I don't think I mentioned that yet, but the damage you take from bleeding is equal to 2% of your max HP. And whenever you recover with by, from guard, I think you recover... I'm not sure how much, but it's more than 2%. Not sure how much you recover by that. Okay, Ruler stopped bleeding. Which is nice, we're gonna try to... do an exit with him. Because he's definitely gonna charge before set will. Thanks to his ability. Oh good, it's bleeding again, nice. That really helps. Okay, one more action for Rudra. And he gets an exceed off. I think I'll guard. Yeah. And now Seth is bleeding as well, but this battle will over will be over soon. Okay, Rudra. Uh, let's go on the skills actually, because I haven't explained Rudra's skills. So, Inner Peace grants Meditate buff, which is a, regener a regeneration effect on your SPs. But inflicts the Exceed minor status, which means you cannot charge Exceed. And Fuhrer, on the other hand, grants Crisis, which is poison for your SPs, Reckless, which is double strength, and Mastery Plus, which enhances how much Master you gain. And I'm gonna do that, since Ruthers Exceed um, Defender. Actually, well, Defender, wow, I just I just said that this was the Exceed. No, Feral Cross. Ruthers Exceed Feral Cross is based on Strength and Resistance. So I'm gonna do that and double my Strength. I already, I already have double Resistance, because I have the Shield status. You attack, Seth. Okay, then. Seth, you can take the kill, it's fine. And we gain Alephus. Great warrior, even the spirits saw your bravery. We, we made it! Looks like we did. Seems like you didn't need my help to take care of this thing. You filthy beast. You've had what you deserve. 
What? What animal on Arya tail? I've never seen anything like that. Something's wrong. What do you mean? That wolf was different just yesterday. That's right, different fur color and different crystals on his back. These crystals, they look exactly like the ones we found in the thief in the last few years. Misty are studying this stuff too. These are gray though, and the ones being studied are red. The last time we've seen the wolf, the crystals were red. Now it's all grayed out, and I think it's lost most of its viciousness. Hmm. Just like its strength depended on the crystals. That's likely. The wolf must have absorbed the energy of the crystals. And once the flow of energy was over, it came back to being a dire wolf, and we were able to kill it. That would mean the crystals assume a different hue based on the residual energies they store. I wonder if it all takes to transfer this energy from the crystal to a living being as physical contact. That might be it. Well, this is all we can do for now. This area will be safer without that monster around. We need to get back to Rail and War Lord, Lord Maester immediately. Alright. We actually have time to pay a visit to Rail, I guess. It's right here. Might as well go. Here we are. Get to the castle as soon as possible. You remember the way, right? Of course. It's right out of town, west side. Alright, don't play any tricks, my men will be watching. Don't worry, I'll keep my word. Perhaps this time you will. It's not like we can just go, prim go anywhere. We're kinda stuck here now. Anyway, up here! A little optional place to get a few treasure chests here. For duration, and then... Hey, look! It's locked! Well, we'll have to remember to come back here later when we're gonna find a safe cracker that can open it. We also gain a Gaia Shard, which is nice. If you wonder what the Gaia Shards do, uh, they won't be useful until like halfway through the game, but just pick them up for now. This is a Vanguard's warehouse. You're allowed to enter, but don't touch anything. Sorry, I just stole all the stuff except a chest because I couldn't open it. Levedzoa used to be much less important and known as flourishing before the treaty the two nations of Herlias and Rasgard south of Mystia were the richest nation of the world. The treaty hit them hard. That's what happened to Merzen as well. And we're gonna grab this, which is an Arctic scale, just a material to upgrade weapons. I'm a theater goer. I'm saving up for a trip to Benedicta. Reckon's Empire capital, you know. That's where one can find the world's greatest theater, right at the heart of the theocracy. And up here... This is kind of hidden, but there is a treasure chest with the northern material. Alright, um, I might want to explain uh, the item we picked up before, actually. <coughs> the, the Atlas Shard that we picked up. So, now here, we have a slot on Seth's weapon in which we can put an Atlas Shard. So, we have Lapis. That increases our dexterity and Taurus that increases our strength. I'm gonna go for Taurus. So what these things are, these are Atlas crystals that you find around the world. There are two types. There are Guard Atlas Shard and Offensive Atlas Shard. And they have various effects from giving you statistics, from permanent buffs to Well, there's there are very, very many, many status effects. I, I don't know, like for example, Alpha SPs use aids, but they give you debuffs. Or just statistics. There are many, many different ones. And right now we only have one slot to put them in. But there will be weapons with more slots. So with two slots, for example. But two is the max. So you only have an offensive and a guard. But yeah, they, they're kind of like materials, I guess. More, more or less, they're kind of like materials. My friend was supposed to be here half an hour ago. Where did she go? I don't know. So here is another opportunity to get the... Oops. The Gaia Shard that's up here, that you find in the very first minutes of the game. And now we're gonna keep exploring this town. Now that we, that's in daylight, and we can actually talk with the people. 
and see what all these buildings are here for. I slept all this in tonight, and let me tell you something, it was amazing. Best night of sleep I had in the whole fief. In the western end of Mistia, one can find the ruins of Mertron City, the most important city of the Empire right after the capital. The metropolis has been abandoned after the war between Levitzo and Carla. And this is just the inn. I don't think there's anything interesting in here, nor, nor anything I can steal, right? Hmm. So my tourist rent rooms in this inn during the staying rail. Rolf is full, but maybe we can get your room. Why is your name? Hang on! Okay, you're cool. Did I dream that? Did, was I was I just seeing things? Oh no, your name changes. You go from girl in English to girl in Italian. What the hell, Dev? Uh, I keep finding bugs. I'm not even the bug tracker, dude. Uh, like there's a person that is supposed to find these things, and that isn't me. You're so sleepy. Fine, you 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 go to sleep. My alchemical items are all marked by this icon. If I have the, the alchemy skill, I'll be able to use them, as a hint of another passive ability. I came all the way to Rael to taste the local delicacies. So yeah, we just got introduced to another passive ability that we don't have, but we may find a character that has that. The game is just teasing us with many things. And it's just telling us, look, this game is complicated, okay? It's not your usual RPG Maker 2003 if it wasn't clear already. Even though I grew up in the city, I spent my youth studying Vars and Trimes. All Vars and Clanners are supposed to see the Carver at least once in their lifetime. Huh. This Carver seems to be an important guy. At least developed countries before the treaty are flourishing nowadays. Before their economies didn't rely on technology nearly as much. How ironic. After the, after the treaty, the biggest cities in the world were abandoned. All that's left of them now is a massive pile of rust. I've heard someone praise this fact of the setting of the game. It's not a post-apocalyptic game, it's a post-apocalyptic -post game. Because we had the apocalypse when the fossil fuels and stuff were... Well, the, the, they finished. Then they found the Atlas, but then that finished too, so that's like a... That's like a post-apocalyptic -post uh, scenario, which is... I don't think anyone has ever done that. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe yes, but... Hey, what do I know? Do you know old Maxwell? He lives in this building. They say he's a bit nuts. If you check this door that's closed, I don't think I want to return here yet. Huh. Don't want to say why Seth talks like that. <coughs> but I just want to remember that place. There are so many villages in this fief, but only a few are worth a visit. Thanks to Leather's reforming of the treaty, I can finally use the Atlas-powered machinery to till my fields. My back won't hurt anymore. My body here keeps complaining about their search investments. If we all were like this, we would still be lighting fires with rocks and sticks. I'm not sold on this research on new energy sources. Oh, oh hello. Hi. I love my grandpa so much. Yeah, you go and love your grandpa. I'm just gonna look at this cat here. Which is a nice little animation. Despite the capital of the thieves, rather it's really quite down. Hi there, NPC4 from Terranigma. Hey! Hey, where, where where did you go? Don't disappear like that. Where? There you go. The street lights are powered by Solar Atlas. It's a sort of atlas that can keep energy they can't keep energy for long, but sunlight can recharge it very quickly. No classes today. Oh, I really need a break. Lucky you. Lucky you, boy. What about you? Oh, we can't complain here. Levitzo is the richest empire in Artithale. Eh, it is. Wait, isn't is a Reckon is a Reckon more? Is it record richer? I don't know. It's not easy to move between fiefs. Grandma told me that before the treaty, one had to use strange flying machines to reach other islands in Artitale. Yeah, they're called planes. Ever heard of planes? What a nice shiny day. And you're not really much for words, are you? Stupid soldiers, they, they never speak, I tell you. What's you looking at, huh? Too many people underestimate how dangerous the wilds are. If you're traveling, remember to resupply before going there. Yeah, a doggy. 
And there's an item shop. Can I steal stuff from you? I always check everything just to be on the safe side, that I'm not missing any uh, hidden items. We're trying to make a living by selling Prima goods. It's honest work. Shopkeeper, how did you need anything? If you could please turn my direction to talk to me, I'll be pleased, but I guess you can't really get everything. Okay, we have healing quartz and soul quartz that restores as HP and SPs respectively. Herbal remedy that removes bleed, blur, and seal status effects. We've seen only bleed for now, but we're only gonna need that. It It's kind of costly and money in this game, you don't really get a lot in the beginning, but as it goes on, you start getting more. It removes Fury and Shiftless status effect, and they have a TRL Quartz, which is a revive. So, nothing really interesting there. But we're almost done with Rail, actually. We just have a couple more houses to visit. One Artifel is ever going to wear one of these. Holy Rion, we passed the actual Middle Ages, you know. Wow, the rifle is a beauty. It's game season. I need to buy myself a new rifle. Okay, do you sell armor? What do you sell? Okay, we already seen Lephus and um, Taurus. Ups dexterity, ups strength, ups resistance, and ups spirit. So now we have all four stat, all four statistics. I'm not gonna buy any of these, even if I could, because I don't want to waste the money on it. We have a red padded jacket. Uh, nothing for me in this shop. Hey, remember episode one? That's the third time, damn. The scaffoldings are broken, again. I'll catch you wherever you might be, I swear it. Sure, you do that. In the meantime, we're just gonna get out of here before you catch us. Can't do anything with this woman, he's sleeping. She's sleeping. Even though it's a sunny day, it's best to keep the fire stoked. This is a cold reason, you know? Hey, what about you? Roland Leif is always one of the most important rulers history remembers. His son, Tryon, the Emperor, used to be a proud monarch, but he seems to have lost the will to, to rule when his wife died. They say someone poisoned her. Huh. That's unfortunate. I believe that in the next door, here, I can steal from this box. No, I can steal from here then. Haha, <laughs> Mithril. That's quite a rare material for this point in the game. And steel, nice. More materials for us. We're on a roll now. But I think that's it, yeah. The crystal mountains to the northeast beyond Raleigh. The spirits tell of a time when the mountains were inhabited by bards and tribes, but no one lives there anymore. Okay. I think, yeah, that's the last screen. Yeah, with that, we unlock Rail's castle. But we're not gonna go there. Because seriously, it's already been 28 minutes. We might as well end it here, but before we do that, let's check on with Ark. And let's see how many treasure chests we opened. Hi, Ark. Your third goal is 10 open chests. We opened 11 chests so far. Alright, then go ahead and take one of my treasures. And Fallon Shard, Seldon Shard, Indigo Shard, and Umber Shard. a few materials. And that counts as a test, because now our next goal is 30, but we only opened 12. We're gonna check with him later on in the game when we will have 30 chests open. As of now, I think that's it. Yep, that was it for this ep for this episode. I'll just see you guys in a couple days when we're gonna enter Rail Castle. See you guys then.